What's up ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the good, the bad and the stupid, it's Friday the 15th of January, last one of the week, last one from me, the Friday feeling, you've got, uh, I'm going to hand you over to the bottle, I'm going to hand you over to the cans of lager and the curry and the Friday night film, or are you up for an all nighter, what's your plans tonight, Have you got, are you going to... Uh, are you going to boogie in the kitchen? Are you, boogie, are you finding a different room in the house that you've not boogied in in the past 12 months or in the past however many uh, period weekends of lockdown that we've had? Maybe it's the broom cupboard. You having a party in the broom cupboard? Is that where you keep your drug stash? Maybe that's where you... Uh, maybe if it is, then somebody must know about it. Is it slowly creep? Is it slowly going down a little by little? Then somebody's found it and they, they're not telling you and they're going in and nicking a little bit. Now and then is your weed stash getting less and less and less because somebody else the kids are bored as well the kids are bored and they're they're searching for things to do and they accidentally stumble upon your drug stash and they're you're not going to say anything they're not going to say anything <laughs> so it's just evils again again it's the western eyes the western movie eyes where the the two guys are um, doing a standoff for the shoot what they call it the fucking uh, Oh, what do they call it when they have the, st the standoff anyway when they have the standoff and their eyes meet and the camera goes back and forth between their eyes which one's going to move first and that's the same one with the drugs with the kids who's going to say anything you've nicked some of my drugs no they're not going to say that and they're going to say think did they know that they've nicked some of my drugs anyway what's he talking about drugs for I don't know it's the Friday feeling that's what everybody's you got to have your drugs of choice it might not be drugs it might be a bottle of wine to you that's still a drug it might be a packet of fucking Marlboro Lights and a bottle of whiskey. They're still drugs. Whatever it is. Maybe it's doing a jigsaw. Maybe your drug is you're going to pull out the big jigsaw or Friday night jigsaw. Um, <laughs> that you really have. Uh, you really are boring if, you, if you're going to do that. I'm sorry. A jigsaw on a Friday night. Even if fucking if you're the, if you're the biggest jigsaw, jigsaw fan going. You've got to find something else to do on a Friday night. That's a Monday endeavour at the very at the very most. Um, anyway, I don't know what I'm talking about. I'm fucking bored, and I've I've been I've been uh, twiddling my thumbs for a couple of hours, trying to get something sorted, and I've been waiting on the phone. Anyway, but let's, enough about me. Let's talk about somebody else who's twiddling his thumbs, wondering what the fuck's going to go on, and that's Donald Trump. He's he's thumb twiddling, he's scratch, he's thumb but he's thumb twiddling, he's he's nail biting, his uh, his toes are probably. Bending, what to call him, uh, curling. Uh, some of the, he's look thinking back on some of the things that he might have said that's going to get him into trouble. And now we're saying no, he doesn't give a shit, does he? He really don't. But he, uh, he he's not. He's told somebody not to pay his lawyer's bill now. I thought that lawyer him and him was buddies, right in, uh, you know, in each of us, in each of us beds almost, not about in each of us pockets. But he's Rudy Giuliani, is he? Apparently he's been told not to pay his, his bill. His, his, uh, he owes him twenty thousand pound. I suppose they're friends, but it's money business. At the end of the day, and he's charging him twenty thousand pound a day. Twenty thousand pound a day, and they're, so they they wonder the buddies if he thinks he's getting that. But he's been told not to pay it, so he might not be getting his money. So he's going to be coming out, turning his back on him now, and he's going to be coming out and fucking starting throwing shit in that direction. He's been backing him, but apparently Trump's pissed off because he uh, he fucked up by getting the um, doing the press conference from the Four Seasons Landscaping Company instead of Four Seasons Hotel. <laughs> That's the biggest cock up, go, isn't it? Isn't it? Tarnished his name there. He tarnished his own name there. So he's obviously pissed off that he's had to t play the fall guy on behalf of Trump. Now he wants his twenty grand a day. Trump's not paying it. So wait for the the. Uh, Wait for the fucking, you know, the knives to come out now. It's like a, um, a a modern day version of fucking some Roman situation. Without the knives, obviously, but the, the knives and the daggers here are fucking words and, and setting people up and stitching people up, making you fucking be tarnished for the rest of your life rather than somebody actually coming and fucking sticking a dagger in your back. Like they did to Caesar. Or guillotining your head off like they do to the the French, uh, the fucking politicians in uh, in Europe. Once upon a time, that is not 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 these days. Uh, anyway, moving on.
What am I talking about? Oh yeah, I'm trying to do the part, get the political stuff out of the way first. And now about a, how about a tattoo of Boris Johnson? What would you do? What would you? Uh, sorry, would you? What? Well, 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 what? What well, can't get me fucking words out now? What would it take for you to have a tattoo of Boris Johnson on your stomach? <laughs> what would uh, be the? What would? What would you ask for? For, for you to go through with having a Boris Johnson tattoo on his stomach, a massive one as well, uh, and not even of him, pull, of him pulling a stupid face at the, at the same time. It's a right uh, mugshot. And the guy's got it tattooed on his belly, and he's done it, and I, I just thought, that is ridiculous. I thought it was a Boris Johnson fan to start with. I thought, that is just pathetic. It's the worst thing. It's one of the worst tattoos I've ever seen, and I've seen a fucking few. Um, growing up on the council estate, you've seen some fucking tattoos. <laughs> Not uh, especially the handmade ones. Handmade Donald uh, Donald Duck tattoos. I was going to say Donald Trump then. Donald Duck tattoos. Um, but yeah, so he's got this tattoo, and he, but he's done it for charity. So I'm going to give him a huge pass on that because he's done it as a fundraiser. I don't know whether he is a fan, but I I like to think that he fucking hates him, and he's done it to raise money because he's raised he's raised eight hundred quid so far towards a, a guy's cancer. Uh, um, charity so if you want to find it and you want to find the charity dig it out or you'll find it on uh, online but it's ridiculous I hope he's got fucking he's got he's got like he's going to save some of the charity money to have it removed afterwards at the very least surely they're going to allow him that he doesn't want to keep that forever anyway that's good that's uh, that's going all out for his mate that is that's uh, you know you can't, you can't save fucking fairer than that Anyway, moving on, a Taliban boss. <laughs> Taliban. I don't talk about the Taliban on this podcast. He's meant to be light-hearted, but I'm going to, because the Taliban has been... The Taliban, the, the Taliban. I'm tongue-tied today, you can see. I, I haven't done my mouth exercises. Uh, a Taliban has been ordered... His, I've, said, I've done it again. A Taliban boss <laughs> has ordered the whole of the Taliban that they can only have one wife because they're strapped for cash. <laughs> So they've been told they can only have one wife. Oh, diddums. What a shame. And fucking, but at least that's a few women that don't have to fucking suffer oppression. And because, uh, although I'm, I, I imagine that they're quite up for it because that's the lifestyle they lead. But on the behalf of anybody with any kind of sentiment or, or sentiment or, um, not sentiment, um, scruples or morals about them would suggest that that was a good thing that they were only allowed to have one wife to abuse or to treat like shit or maybe they don't treat their own wives like shit they just treat every other fucking person's wife like shit that they come to when they burn the villages down or tell them that they can't listen to music or tell them that they uh, can't play games or exercise or whatever else it is that they can't do can't have a radio it's fucking you wouldn't you wouldn't want to live there, I tell you. But uh, but now even their own Taliban possibly might turn on their uh, their own boss and sort him out. And so you're joking, ain't yeah? We live in shit. Do you think although we follow your rules, do you think we really don't want to be able to listen to the Beatles and listen to fucking the Rolling Stones and and listen to uh, the BBC on the World Service? We do that because we we follow the Taliban rules, but that's because we're allowed to have ten wives. You just fucked that up now. We're going to... Uh... Either that or you better give us fucking a lot of opium because you've got to fill the time where we're usually with our other wives. So we need a lot of opium. We need to get high. High as a kite. <laughs> For six days of the week so that the one day of the week we can spend with the one wife. I think they usually have about six or seven, apparently, according to that. Surely there must be a fucking... There must be some ugly Taliban people, or ugly blokes over there who can't get a wife because there's the, the, all the women are with all the other blokes and you'd be like that fucking hell you've got seven I can't even I ain't even got one there's none left everybody's got seven eight he's got he's got four there's no there's not even one left for the rest of us <laughs> so um, it's got to be like that if there's an even amount of women versus men then they have to be they, then they have to go and like get married to a man and then they get fucking killed by their own boss by the Taliban so it comes back on them Possibly, that's a scenario that possibly could happen. They wouldn't be able to tell them, that's for sure. Um, a racing pigeon that survived an 8,000 mile passive Pacific crossing will have to be killed. Well, he's wasted his fucking time then, hasn't he? A racing pigeon that flew to Australia, I think it did. 
Yeah, he, uh, was it? He landed only to turn up in the exhaust. Didn't he? Kevin, the bird named Joe, went missing during the race in the US and then landed in somebody's garden in Australia. <laughs> so he's, he, he got lost, obviously, and he's gone all the way to Australia. And then they, they're going to put it down. Come on, you've got to at least just quarantine it for a little bit. They're saying they're going to put it down because it might have carried disease that might be uh, uh, bad for the Australia. They don't fuck about it. It might be bad for their foliage or for their uh, uh, environment, uh, the native wildlife. They don't mess about in Australia because they've, they've messed it up that many times by introducing something. Cats, rabbits. I think they had rabbits once. Kept the book cats in to sort that out. Feral cats. Then it, it, everything they brought in went rampant and killed a lot of things and destroyed a lot of things. So they're not going to uh, put up with a, a dodgy pigeon. Although I would suggest that that was probably worth a bit of money if it's a racing pigeon. There were, somebody sold a pigeon the other week for something like 50 grand or was it a million? Might have been a million. It was a ridiculous amount of money for a pigeon. Ridiculous. So uh, if anything, put it in a cage and send it back to, send it back to America. I don't understand why they've got to put it down. There's got to be a way around this. Let's get that pigeon's on death row. Can we get a lawyer? Can we all chip chip in and get a lawyer to uh, <laughs> to take the case on? No, of course, of course we can't. Um, what's it called? Oh yeah, uh, Snickers and Twixies and Marses have left chocolate lovers feeling shortchanged. Again, they're doing it again. The short this. Everybody's shortening their chocolate bars and not telling anybody. They're charging the same price. But then you'd be like, hang on, I'm short. And my hand's getting bigger. That chocolate bar looks a lot smaller. It's starting to look like, remember the Milky Ways used to be half the size of a, of, a, of, a, of a Snickers or a Topic used to be quite small. And now they're shrinking the Snickers and the Marses. That's how they're saving money. Why don't you just reduce... Oh, probably the, If it's the same difference, why don't you just... Reduce the price a bit and keep it the same. No, that wouldn't work, would it? Put the price up. People won't mind. They want a full size. It's only pence, isn't it, for fuck's sake? Anybody goes, oh, I ain't going near the Snickers now. They're 5p more. <laughs> then you really are. You, I mean, the people. there's a lot of people who probably are in that situation. They, can't, they obviously either can't afford the Snickers, full stop, or they can afford the extra 5p. That's where I'm coming at. Don't send me hate mail. Don't get sending me... Uh, I'm not the one who's sending out fucking dodgy food parcels to the poor, to the people who fucking need it. That food parcels that look disgusting, even if you got it for, uh, even if you um, got it for free, and they are, well, I'm not, rather than it meant to be costing thirty pound. Anyway, we've talked about that already this week. If anyway, if there's a zombie apocalypse. I've run out of things to talk about now. I shouldn't have, I shouldn't have uh, rambled on in the, uh, at the beginning. Uh, what's it called? A Walking Dead style apocalypse. If if there is a, ever a Walking Dead Dead style apocalypse, zombies that is, the the best place to live in the country is Cambridge. <laughs> so uh, I, I don't know why the, the university topped the list of the places most likely to survive a zombie invasion due to its number of onshore wind farms, recycling centres, and farmland. Well. Well, about a to how about the fucking high-rise flat? Well, you've got to get food and stuff, ain't you, I suppose? <laughs> if, no, that's not going to work. I've not, I've not briefed myself on uh, what to do in, in the zombie apocalypse. We're probably fucking close enough to one now. I mean, we, you're coming into... If everybody's infected with some disease and you come into contact with them and then you catch that disease and die, then that's borderline a zombie apocalypse in, in the sense... Although the person that you're catching it off might not be dead, they might be dying, and then they're passing it around. If this if this virus gets any worse, here we go, bringing the bringing the tone down now. But it's kind of like a, a shit version of that, isn't it? But anyway, Cambridge is one of the best places. Swansea, Belfast, Bristol, Armagh, Plymouth, Edinburgh, Dundee, Gloucester, and Manchester. The rest of us are fucked. So we're all going to go there, and then the zombies are going to follow us. So there's going to be too many people. And the, and the zombies are going to come. And they're going to say, <laughs> we're, 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 we've evolved like the virus. We've evolved and now we know how to get into doors. We're not going to just go up banging on your window, licking your window, screaming at you through the window. We're going to use the keys. I'm going to use the keys to my own house and come in. Because they're all the zombies. They've probably all got keys and the phones and everything still in the pockets. 
We don't know. They might have moved on since the 1980s movies. Right, last one I'm going to do then. I'm obviously I'm getting tongue tied, and I'm uh, I'm thinking about what I'm going to do this evening, and it certainly isn't going to be a jigsaw. I can tell you that right now. It's going to be a lot more entertaining than that. Um, what about the, let's do the jogger? The jogger who was a jogger was jogging on his hours exercise, and he was told he was stopped by a COVID policeman and told him to stop breathing so heavy. <laughs> he was out of breath. And he was he was uh, obviously working up a bit of a you know a bit of a heart getting his heart rate going, and the marshal replied that he's breathing too. I've stopped you because you're breathing breathing too heavily, and the bloke couldn't believe it. And to be fair, there's a photo of him there, and he looks fucking knackered. <laughs> he's got a face on him like he's just ran. He's probably only run, run a mile. He's got a face on him like he's just ran a marathon. So uh, he's obviously on fit, and he must have been giving it some. But the marshal stopped him and told him to stop breathing so so heavily. That's ridiculous, isn't it, really? I mean, surely you're not going to be near anybody when you're jogging anyway. And then it's up to them to get out of the way. I mean, if you've got right away, everybody keep to the left. That's what we do in England. <laughs> keep to the left. And then uh, just like you do on the roads, do that on the paths. And then everybody's okay. Right. That's all I'm going to do. And hopefully you've, uh, you enjoy it. It's possible, might not be, but possible that I won't be doing the videos next week for uh, the, the YouTube videos, but the podcast will still be going on and uh, I'll make that decision over the weekend. So hopefully you enjoyed it and have a good weekend and I'll see you again next week. See you. Bye.